Jesus was a rock star. If you would pray with me, along with me, and say, Lord, help us to give more than we receive, serve more than we are served, love more than we are loved, because the church does not exist for us. We are the church, and we exist for the world. That's our prayer, dear God. Um, so today is uh, September 3rd, and uh, next week it will be, are we in the end times? And then next week is Four Horsemen. Sorry, I, I put one, out, one more in there. And so we're going to ask, we're going to look at the scripture and see if today's culture all uh, looks like that it could be the end times right now. And uh, maybe it depends on the day for you, I don't know, uh, sometimes for me. And, but then, uh, then the Four Horsemen, and we're going to hang out um, in Revelation for a couple more weeks, but we're going to be coming back to Ephesians because my math isn't good, and I got one more message for you that I want to do out of the book of Ephesians uh, before we take on any other big, big things. But uh, anyway, it's uh, I I hope I I love God's word. I love it so much. Now I'm not a I'm not a brilliant guy, um, but boy, I love digging down deep into His word and and knowing stuff. And and when you're reading the scripture, I had a I had a conversation just uh, this morning yesterday. Somebody said something and said, you know what? That's a good question. I would love to to study on that because there's no good answers. Now uh, now we're going to open today with a, I thought that you guys know who Carmen is. Who Carmen was? Okay, so I am going to bottle six weeks worth of theology in one Carmen song, okay? And I thought, why should I try to do it when he just articulates them? We are going to go through them as well and build on it. Um, but I, I, this is just, uh, I'm here. this is the seven Hebrew words. Way back in the Bible, the Hebrew language says, that we were taught that we could praise the Lord in seven ways Seven great expressions Seven different flows Seven ways to worship God And this is how it goes Sacrifice, praising God in spite the fact your world is in a vice. It's praise that pushes through the wall of all adversity and offering that flows to heaven in our time of need. Somebody say, Mine, Mine. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say, To what the Lord has done throughout the land I would sign what's inside for all the world to see A demonstration of our love So come praise the Lord with me Can you wave one hand and say praise the Lord Can you wave both hands and say praise the Lord Now can you clap those hands and say praise the Lord means to bow in the awesome presence of the Lord and all his power. Just be overwhelmed, cause you hardly can believe that you've been given favor by his holy majesty. Praise the Lord, praise the
<laughs> it's what we call the shout. It's praise that's given way before the answer comes about. A public testimony that drowns out all the noise of whiners and complainers as the saints all lift their voice. If you believe that God's alive today, shout yeah! So the, here's where we've been hanging out. How this all started in Ephesians 5 is because we're hanging out in Revelation and found out that Revelation and Ephesians 5, they're just, they're, they're like synced up between uh, Revelation 5 and Ephesians 5. So that's where it is. Now last week, uh, sharing with you, and there's one thing, I, I didn't feel like I rung the bell. You know what I mean? I, I didn't feel there's one point. I left that day and I said, I did not talk about that enough. So you actually saw this slide uh, last week. Speak to one another in Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs if you look at that verse doesn't it seem like a dichotomy because you're supposed to sing to one another but you're also supposed to do it in your heart okay and i, I think i mentioned this super quickly last week but I, I wanted to hit you with this today paul is saying speak to one another in psalms hymns and spiritual songs singing and uh singing and singing praise in your heart to god and, and i spent a lot of time uh because because uh, I read one scholar say something, and sometimes when he says something, it's just too good. You know what I mean? It's like, that'll preach too good. I better double check. And that was part of last week when I showed you all, all that stuff, because I was, I was insecure, because it's just, it's just too perfect. It'll preach too good, right? Well, uh, whoops. Oh, come on, clicker. There we go. Um, so what it is, is when we come into worship, our focus is on God. And our being enamored with God influences the people around us we sing praises to god to one another um, and, and so when the church has always sung music has always been part of worship of god and that's where these seven hebrew words come from and we're going to run through uh th them very quickly um so you could just recap carmen said all of this in his song it's a brilliantly written written song by the way um bahala means to be clamorously foolish and you can read the entire definition there because there's there's like the english language words can mean different nuances and things uh yada uh, just to throw at or away uh intentionally bemoan or to be wringing your hands 
It's kind of fascinating for a word for, for praise in the, in the Hebrew. Uh, Torah. Um, Torah uh, is, is the sacrifice. It's confessing. Um, Shabbat, shout of triumph. I think the line from Carmen's song was, we give a shout when the answer hasn't yet come about, or something like that. No, was, we're going to rejoice in God for his path past faithfulness, but we're also going to shout at our current situation, and we're going to do it and, and just saying, Lord, we believe you. Um, Barak is to kneel. Zamar is to play the guitar. Boom, ba doom, boom, boom. That was pretty cool. Um, and Tehillah, not tequila, Tehillah is, is all of them kind of put together. They're all, they're all put together. Uh, and then Barak and, um, is very simply to meal, kneel, uh, and Shabak is to shout in triumph. Whoop. Am I getting too far away? Where am I? I think I might have missed the slide here. I did. I did miss the slide. Okay, so it should be right after Tehillah, I think. Oh, do, 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 do. Sorry. I may have done a bad thing. We're going to go to right. Uh, it's going to say here. Let's play the guitar. All right. So now you're not going to work for me. Dun, 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 dun. So I, I wanted to take these Hebrew words and and kind of uh, paint t- and look at my own worship experience. Now I, I I don't know everything, and I only live in my head. So it totally occurs to me that your interaction with God may be different than mine. But there is a theological doctrinal approach to what I'm going to share this to you, and, and it was incredibly exciting for me because um, I. I was thinking, well, first I'll talk about the theology, and then I'm going to paint, then I'm going to just talk about what it feels like to me, you know, and, and what I want for each and every one of you so badly. If I could get you to experience the power and the presence of God um, the way I do, it changed your life, you know, and so that's what I want for you so badly. So I began listing down some of the things that um, that I do, and there's, and there's doctrinal reasons for these even outside of these words, but um, the first one is when we come to church, the reason why we start with, tend to start with a fast song, you ever notice that? It tends to be a fast song first. That's kind of the shout triumph phase. It's to wake everybody up, grab everybody's attention, bring them together, maybe hopefully put your, your attitude and your body in a posture of getting ready to interact with God. Uh, it's shouting, it's triumph. That's why we start church uh, with a fast song. Not all churches do, and it's not wrong if you didn't, but it's just kind of, you're still coming in from the coffee, you know, we want to yell at you for a minute and, and, and try to take your eyes and, and shoot them and shoot them up. So it's Thanksgiving and shout. And so that's, for me, that's the first thing. Uh, and, and it's the same as when I am uh, by myself. I always start out with thanking him because I got to get myself off of my, my, my narrow-minded, selfish self. So I, I usually start out just to, God, thank you for this. Uh, what I want, all I want is to know you and love you forever. Jesus, if I got you, man, that's all I need. And, I just, and so that's, that's the beginning for me is, is that shout of triumph and being a, a little bit loud. And then after I, I do that for a while and I'm entering into God and, and maybe there's a, a middle song that helps to transition that. Um, but... Uh, there comes a very interesting thing, uh, conviction. And why does that happen? Why are are these Hebrew words? We have one means to throw away and to be wringing your hands. So so one of the Hebrew words for praise means you're you're thrown away. It's intensely, uh, you're bemoaning a situation. And what it is, you're bemoaning your unworthiness. And so then, ta-da, I get in the presence of God. I begin to rejoice. I begin to shout. And then I, my, as my heart begins to focus and as I begin to get me out of the way so I can feel his presence. Remember, it really is not good theology to ask God to come with his presence because he's never the problem. It's always me. Better is, is but that louder song, I declare God's victory and he comes. And, and, and then when I, when I begin to sense his presence, when I begin to see his light, like we've been talking about through Ephesians 5. When, when I see his light, his light exposes what? It exposes a, where I'm broke. When I'm in the presence of God, there's something about the holiness of God. There's something about the, uh, the light of God. Is that all of a sudden, I, I'm, I begin to compare my brokenness with his wholeness. I begin to compare my darkness with his light. And that brings an emotion. There's a wringing of hands. There's a, God, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. And, and so we confess. We sacrifice. We kneel. We get down. And, and so you see this progression. We come in, and it's a loud triumph. For, but as we get 
through the layers in our own mind. And that's why music is important. Someone says, well, I, the, that music they do in that church is just all emotional. Well, pff, kill me. I, it's, it, that's, so, it, it's a stupid thing to say because it is emotional. That's, the, that's what music does. You know, just a, a certain chord progression can make you want to cry. Music is the shoehorn of our worship service in worshiping God because it makes us open. It helps us get past our own heads. And so uh, if you were in a worship service someplace and there was no emotion, uh, they just, well, God, it's all about the doctrine. It's all about, you know, and they sing in a monotone. You know, maybe that'll work for you, but that's not how it's going to be in heaven. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be wild. And so they kneel. And so once you, you come and you feel his holiness, and then you begin to confess that Toda, we begin to confess our sins. We sacrifice, because it is a sacrifice to, to subject ourselves to that pain. We would much rather say, no, thank you, Holy Spirit, and just enjoy the song. And that is possible. Music can get in the way of worship, but, not, but that's on you. That's really not on the musician up here. It's to get you to interact with God. It's, it's really on you to push back that place and when that conviction comes when that holiness of god comes you say yes and that's where you kneel and i'll tell you what it, it, the next part is i think the what the worship that we are going to experience in heaven and that's hala which one of the th one of the things in hala it, hallelujah it, it's the wild one it means calamorously foolish calamorously foolish is hala um because it's wild now, you might have been someplace or you were in a worship service and a, somebody got kind of nutty. Maybe they began to sing really loud or they began to dance in kind of a, a wild way. But if you looked on the rapture on their face, you would know that they're having an experience with God. When halah hits, you don't care anymore. When halah hits, the people around you no longer matter. Whether you're hitting the right notes doesn't matter. You just come in and you get to experience the power and the love of God. And that's where the change happens. Now, what we're going to do right now, uh, you see how fast I just ran through that? Because I didn't want to leave here without giving you an opportunity to um, practice this. Now, we're going to, I'm going to put a song on here, and I think it might be familiar to some of you, but I don't want you to sing it until you can't help yourself. And what I want to encourage you to do, I'm not going to stop everything and, and make you follow my directions, but what I want to encourage you to do, is we're gonna, we're gonna, it's a five-minute song. We're going to listen to it twice. And it's Psalm 48. And I want you to, I wanted to give you a way of interacting with God that maybe you've not done before. And so what I encourage you to do, you get, the words will be on the screen, but I would encourage you at, at, just stay in your seat and close your eyes and wrap your heart and mind around every lyric. Around every lyric. Just, wrap, just make sure that that word, which is the word of God, it's Psalm 48. Get your heart and mind focused intensely on every lyric of that song and then um and, and just and just see what it does to you see what it does to you um and open yourself up to his word then we're going to listen to the song again we're gonna listen to it two times 10 minutes okay but the second time we listen to the song i would invite you to stand and i want you to do what you did before but go deeper just, just take another, another step. And, and, and that's what worship feels like. A good worship is, is first I got to break through all my own junk. Then I got to break, break through my own sin and receive his grace. And then, I'm in, I, then I can, it's like I'm right with him. And there's nothing between us anymore. The Apostle Paul says, he says, right now we know in part, but then we will know fully. In other words, that, that worship experience in heaven, what we know right now, like as good as I've ever got, here and get myself out of the way and interacting and knowing and loving him and but the best I worship I ever had here is nothing compared to the day when the great multitude are there and, and the elders and the cherubim and everybody all creation is worshiping God and the, the awe of God so clam the hala I called the awe of God it's it's just like God I just can't believe how amazing you are and that you love me and and, and you just roll in that awe of God so I'm gonna play the song i just invite you to wrap your heart and mind around every word let the word of god get deep inside of you and allow the music to be the shoehorn to get you past your own head because that's what music is that's what music does that's why god created it
And if you are here today and you wish church was a little longer because you wanted to worship longer, that's exactly what I hoped for you today. <laughs> we are having a worship night. We're going to be going over to Heartland Community Church on the third Sunday in September. Um, very uh, close to that church. And uh, I pastored there for a while. And they're having a worship night. It's on a Thursday evening. I want to invite you. Um, because we have philosophical reasons for having a one-hour uh, service on Sundays. Uh, you know, we, we want to be a people that are easy for everybody to come and, and, and things. And, and so our goal on Sunday is not to get all your worshiping for the week done on Sunday. Um, if, if, but you can, you can put your headphones on. You can do that, that song anytime you want. You can, and that tactic of just focusing on the words and you're all by your, close your eyes and just do that and just let it, and just let it you know, rock you. Um, it's one way, one of a hundred different ways of interacting with God. Um, you can go ahead and receive the offering and all the cards and stuff that you have. You can just put it all inside of there. And um, we uh, uh, be praying for the parade. We're going to be handing out 8,000 inv invitations to church. I encourage you to be praying for that. And, and uh, we'll be kicking up our small groups the week after um, the parade. So, that would, oh, by the way, um, you know, check off, um, block off Wednesday night, and, and let me know if you would like to be involved in doing some, some teaching at Bible study. Because I'd like to have a, a few of them. Um, you know, I, sorry, the music is going to change. Um, so I will meet you in the hall. Love you guys so much. God bless you. And and I just, uh, just make them a commitment to your heart between you and God right now that you are going to, uh, you're going to chase them all on your own, all by yourself. Just take a, a while and focus your heart and mind on him completely for a period of time. God bless you guys. Jesus was a rock star.